Oh, Aloy. Your Karja friend came through. She went to that Asaram camp you two were looking for, to the southwest. Aloy! Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. You sure you're okay being alone in here? I have Gaia. And learning how to interpret the glyphs of the old ones, it keeps me occupied. Have you gone back to plain song at all? I thought about it, but I wouldn't know what to tell them. The chorus already thinks me a thorn in the thicket. If they knew what we did to Fa, even if they understood, there'd be little they could grasp about all this. No. For now, I must leave the tribe behind. You mentioned you've been teaching yourself how to read? Yes. Gaia was kind enough to put together a list of glyphs used by the Old Ones. She helped me decipher some of the... data you've collected, and showed me how to use the focus to help the process. It's not easy, but... it's been working so far. That's good to hear. Sounds like you met my friend Talana. Yes. The Karja Huntress. I haven't seen armor like hers since the Red Raids, but Varl tells me that she too suffered at the hands of the Mad Sun King. Yeah. She's one of the good ones. Trust me. So you've been talking to Gaia? Yes. She was kind enough to take me through some of the history of the Old Ones, including their demise and the heroic actions of her creator, Elizabeth Sobek. I was surprised to see she was you. Past, but reborn? <laughs> Not that I claim to understand how. Did Gaia tell you anything about Venus? She did. Though it wasn't exactly easy to believe. To think that there are places among the stars where life can bloom as it does here... It is... Humbling, to say the least. And heartbreaking. That such life should be bent on destroying ours. So... How does a tribe like the Utaru manage to maintain the peace with... Warriors like the Tanakh? By holding them off. When our fields bloomed aplenty, the Tanakh looked upon our lands with envy. But Plainsong's dishes provided sanctuary and high ground to keep invaders at bay. In the end, even the Tanakh saw sense in a truce. The Utaru promised to provide the Tanakh with food from our crops every year. In exchange, the Tanakh would relinquish one of their own, a veteran, to train the Utaru in combat. This custom was abandoned a few years after the derangement. But some veterans still remain in the plains. I've been meaning to ask, what's the deal with you and the chorus? You didn't seem to be on the best of terms. That's what happens when you're the one Utaru who insists on publicly defying them. Twice. When the Karja invaded the Utaru plains, they did more than just attack our villages. They burned our fields, took our people as slaves, and murdered those who were too weak to make the trip back to Meridian. To be sacrificed in the Sun Ring. I was helping the healers back then, as waves of refugees swarmed into Plainsong. The chorus was divided in how to face the invaders. Some saw sense in raising arms. Others believed the dishes would keep us safe, as they had many times before. And while they bickered, I buried the seeds of the Fallen. That couldn't have been easy. Seeing your people suffer while the Karja invaded your lands. I come from a small village near Plainsong. My grandmother used to say there was no seed that wouldn't grow there. I moved to the dishes when I decided to apprentice as a healer. When the Red Raids began, I thought about going back, but the injured kept pouring into Plainsong, day after day. 
so I kept putting it off. One day, I woke up to hear a Karja raiding party had ransacked my village during the night. I rushed there with the healers to help the survivors, but there weren't any left. The smell of burning flesh haunts me to this day. I'm sorry, Zo. I made it a point to appear before the chorus as soon as we returned, to demand that we take a stand against the invaders. I was denied. So I left to fight on my own. You said you set out to fight the Karja alone? I did. But it turned out I wasn't the only one. News of my disagreement with the chorus spread through the plains. Before I knew it, I had more than a dozen Utaru warriors ready to follow me into battle. We knew we couldn't take on the Karja armies head on, but we also knew the lay of the land better than they did. We ambushed smaller raiding parties, sabotaged their supply lines, and hit their encampments at night. Sounds like you were a force to be reckoned with. Enough that the Tanakh took notice. When the clans began to push the Karja back east, they let us join their ranks. We chased the enemy all the way to Baron Light. You said you were at Baron Light when the Tanakh defeated the Karja? Tanakh marshals climbed the Cliffs of the Daunt under cover of night, then attacked from the other side. Before we knew it, the gates were open and the full force of the clans burst through. What happened next was... not something I like to remember. When all the dust and blood settled, I smelled it again. The stench of burnt flesh. Our enemies defeated. What was left of my squad returned to the Utaru Plains. I went back to Plainsong. But even as the harvest passed, it didn't feel like I'd truly returned at all. Is that when you became a grave singer? I thought soothing the suffering of others would somehow appease my own. Then you came along and gave me a choice. I could either sing at people's graves or fight for a chance to keep them alive. I'm glad you chose the latter. I need to go, but if you need anything, you can contact me through your focus. I'll keep that in mind.
something other than fire. Bloom in your steps, Outlander. I'm a hit target. So did you. You could put a blade of grass on your feet. Is somebody who owes you a favor? Aloy, wasn't sure you'd ever come around. What do you think of Plainsong? It's quite a place. <laughs> sure. As long as you like the smell of manure. Ah, don't mind me. I won't go wandering again, I promise. There are people who need me here. Some of the others the Eclipse took had it worse than me. A lot worse. Do what you can for them, Yef. I will. Won't be anything like you did, but I'll give it my best. to be done. The river will carry her seeds. We can't give up. If we just... Enough! What's going on here? You're the one who spoke before the chorus. Maybe you can help. This is not your concern, Outlander. Have we not tolerated enough of your intrusions? I think you can handle one more. What is it? My wife, Kalai. She was to join the course. She went up to the promontory to perform the rite of discovery, but she must have fallen. And now they are abandoning the search. We have done enough, Bree. The search party found nothing but her instrument broken beside the riverbed. And atop the promontory was only the dye she used for the ritual. We will not ask more of our people to risk their lives because of one woman's stubbornness. But the seeds she carried deserve to be planted and remembered. I heard how you helped the land god, Ray. How you saw what no one else could. Please, will you look for her seed pouch? False hope is a creeping vine. How was Kalai chosen to join the chorus? The chorus chooses its own, but they can't do so in isolation. They must listen to the people. Kalai was a growing voice for new ideas instead of old traditions, and her beliefs were catching on. We cannot deafen ourselves to dissonance, unpleasant though it might be. So you had to admit Kalai, or risk legitimizing her ideas even more. The Outlander catches on quick. The Rite of Discovery, what is it exactly? It's a pilgrimage to the Promontory. The place where the first Dutaro beheld Plainsong. Kalai was to follow the path our ancestors took, mark her eyes with dye, and then play her song while overlooking the land. She then would have added her mark on the promontory itself, joining the marks of those who came before. Every new chorus member used to make the journey, but because of the derangement, the practice has been abandoned. Too dangerous. No one's done it for years. Then why did she do it? We all urged her not to, but... 
as was her way, she ignored our warnings. She thought it would lend strength to her point of view. She needed to prove that she respected the old ways, even as she advocated against them. Then maybe more people would listen. What were Kalar's political beliefs? Radical. He would have gotten along. Plain Song is dying. But Kalai believed we don't have to die with it. As the wind carries the seed to distant lands. She proposed that the Utara leave Plain Song and seek out a new home. We are bound to this land. A tree cannot pick up its roots, even as fire approaches. But you're not trees. It doesn't matter now. Kalai was carrying a pouch of seeds? Every Utara keeps one. We choose the seeds at a young age, taken from the plants of our forebears or those of other significance. And when one passes, their seeds are returned to the land that nourished them, so that life may spring again. Which is why I want Kalai's pouch. Her seeds deserve to be planted in plain song. The river will carry the seeds to new soil, where they will take root and flower. But they won't be at home. It's the best we can hope for. If I'm out that way, I can take a look around. Thank you. The promontory is northeast of here. Look for the broken bridge at the bottom of the cliffs, right at the promontory's base. That's where the search party found her instrument. Okay. That all right with you? How you waste your time is not my concern. Searching for what the land has already reclaimed is fruitless. Will you trade today? I'm sure I'll have something for you next time. What's going on here? Sounds like there's a problem. We're speaking about something important, Outlander. You'll, please, later. A reminder of why I often prefer plants to people. They're so much less demanding. I apologize for Yol. My people used to be friendlier, but hunger robs many of their kindness. Seems like there's a lot around here in short supply. Is there anything that can help? As Yul said, we need food. So much so that we've sent hunting parties to the old growth, a forest in the north. We never used to hunt animals for food. We never had to. But as our crops fail, we've run out of options. But something else went wrong. A machine slaughtered the last hunting party we sent out. A Klostrider. But to hear the lone survivor tell it, more deadly than any we've seen before. Until it's gone, I can't risk more hunters, but without that meat, our people grow more lean every day. I saw you up there when I spoke in front of the chorus. Yes. I'm sorry I couldn't do more to help you, and especially Zoe. Many Utaru like to think we're above politics, but that is far from true. I don't often agree with Fane, but I have to work closely with him on many matters. So you didn't want to cross him? Not in such a public way, no. I hope you don't hold it against me. What's done is done. It all turned out in the end. Without more food, how much longer can the tribe hold out? The land gods blight the fields more every day. A month? Maybe two? The maddening part is that many are resigned to this fate. Like Fame, who would have us simply wait to die. You heard him. Death is merely part of the grand cycle. But you'd rather do something. Yes, like send hunters to the old growth for food. Fane fought that idea too. He will undoubtedly cast what happened to the hunting party as another reason to side with him. 
if we let him. Tell me everything you know about the machine that attacked your hunters. It fell upon them near the edge of the old growth. One of them, Ven, survived and made it back to Plainsong. If you wish to question him, he's recovering with our healers. The other four hunters weren't so fortunate. It must be a powerful beast. Can you destroy it? I've handled tough ones before. Good. The old growth must be made safe for hunting. One more thing. Every Utaru wears a small patch of seeds. Given at birth, planted at death. It is how we remember our loved ones and celebrate their place in the cycle. It would mean a great deal to the hunters' families if you could recover them. I'll do what I can. I know you will. Be careful in the forest. Before I head for the old growth, I might want to talk to the survivor. See what he can tell me about the Clostrider. There's a survivor from the hunting party. Then? I'm here about the machine in the old growth. You're going after that horror. I'm going to try. Do you mind answering a couple of questions about it? I'll... I'll tell you what I can. Tell me what happened, step by step. There were five of us. Hunting for boar to help feed the tribe, just like we had done half a dozen times before. Some machines got in our way. Happens every time we go to the old growth. Like always, we cleared them out. But this time, when we were done, we heard this roar. Hey, easy. I saw a flash from the trees. All claws and tail. It ripped right through Cole and Ree and Zan. Came right at me. Slashed my shoulder. There was blood. Then an arrow slammed into its neck. My friend Lau. He distracted it. Yelled and whooped. It, it turned on him. He disappeared into the trees. And it followed him. Last thing I heard him yell was for me to run. So I did. I was halfway back to plain song before I realized what I had done. Left Lao to die. Is there anything you can tell me about the machine that might help? It looked like a claw strider, but it was stronger. Much stronger. Anything else? Its armor was darker and it had a strange purple glow. Thanks. I think I know what I'm dealing with. I need to get going. You don't want to fight that thing. Trust me. I know what I'm doing. Well, if you do, I hope you cut it to shreds. It killed Lao, my oldest friend. Train yourself, craft, outland. Me walk in the fields of flint. ready. Do you need...
Is something wrong? Sounds like someone's in trouble. It's Jax. You heard some rumor about Tanakh loitering around where they're not supposed to be. Took off south for Stone's Echo the next day to find them. Damn fool. Who is this Jax, exactly? My friend. Ain't it obvious? Bit younger than me, can still move without every bone creaking. <laughs> Knows his way around a bow, too. Good company to share a drink with. When there's sweet sap to drink, anyway. But I told him, stick your hand in bramble and you're bound to catch a fist of thorns. Maybe I should find this guy. Stone's Echo, he said? That's right. Uh, if you don't mind me, these roots aren't gonna dig themselves. It's lucky for me that you're here, Outlander. The name's Jax. A squad of Tanakh is holed up in that cave. I think they're in trouble. At least one of them is injured. I'm here to offer help, but with the Tanakh, such an offer might be perceived as an insult, even when help is needed. Will you stand with me? I saw you speak before the chorus, so I know you can be persuasive. And if things get out of hand, I will be stronger with your spear at my side. I'll do what I can. There. This camp belongs to Eagle Squad. Retreat or die. At ease, Eagle. I'm not here for blood. Just to parlay. You know the parlay sign? Let us in so we can talk. So far, so good. from the desert, aren't we? This one was blinded? Boy, nothing gets by you. Looks like your training mission didn't go according to plan. We're here to help, if you want it. How does an Utaro know we're on a training mission? He knew how to request a parlay, too. He's not Utaro. Or Tenakht. He must be a veteran. A veteran? I didn't think there were any left. We don't need help from a washed out farmer. Could have fooled me, judging by the look of things. Sister, it sounds like they just want to help us. Why not let them? What have we got to lose? You said you're on a training mission? A machine hunt. The final test before a young squad goes on active duty. Everything was going fine. We tracked a claw strider and hit it hard, but it fled into a herd of bristlebacks. One charged right at Kore. He dodged just in time and landed a strike as it passed. I hit an acid canister. 
The spray was like fire in my eyes. A terrible wound. I should have scouted ahead. Spotted the herd. No. I should have spotted that canister. What does it mean to be a veteran? I was born to not, but offered to Utaro in exchange for tribute. Tribute? Back when there was plenty, the Utaru offered yearly gifts of food to the Tanakh to keep peace between them. Over time, this tribute grew into an exchange of people. The Tanakh needed able-bodied youth to fight their clan battles. And the Utaru needed veteran soldiers to train the defenders of Plainsong. I was just such a soldier. Was being the key word. You may yet need my spear, young warrior. What do you need? Supplies. Dried meat, ammunition, weapons, camping equipment. A lot of provisions for a trip back to the desert. Everything we need is at River Watch. A huge cache of war spoils up there, left over from the route. The route? When our forces drove the Karja back to Baron Light, they made sure the Kestrels felt the loss, made it hurt. Marshal Canera shot a score of fleeing Karja from the top of River Watch, and her squad gathered the loot. It's all just sitting up there. Ours for the taking. Deadly machines are known to patrol that place, and the ruin itself is on the brink of collapse. You think machines and rotting ruins are enough to keep out Eagle Squad? No, but your injuries are. Let Jax and I grab these supplies for you. This is our mission. I'm not handing it over to some... Fine. Come with us. Fine. The three of you hold position. I'll be back. Be safe, sister. The ruin is this way. Once we get those supplies, everything will be fine. So you say. What's that supposed to mean? Your brother's condition is... That's not your problem, farmer. So you say. Stop saying that! Hey, calm down. We're trying to help, remember? So you say. We'll have to cut across the river. Ugh. Avoid the outlander camp down the road. Something wrong? I hate getting wet. Tough as a ravager, this one. I heard that. <laughs> We're here. The entrance should be right under that arch. Machines, I'm going in. No, Aloy's on point. Follow her lead. I don't know that. I if there's another cauldron that could teach me.
had that. Give credit where credit is due, young one. Maybe I would have handled it better if I wasn't busy covering you, old man. Aren't I lucky? I guess the farmer hasn't lost all his fighting spirit. Supply should be up there. Taller than I thought. What's a deadly climb to Eagle Squad? What are you trying to say, old man? Enough. I've climbed this tower before. I'll grab the supplies. Come. Let's see if any of these machines have parts we can strip. Maybe I'll show you a thing or two. What could a farmer possibly know about salvage? Only decades of experience compared to your very brief existence. Okay, gotta find a way into the ruins. Basement. Gotta find a way up. Okay, the supply cache should be at the top of the tower. But how to get up there? Miss the supplies.
these are the supplies? Won't last them very long. I can't leave that kid alone for a second. Jax and Sakura are in trouble. I gotta catch up to them. and take down those machines. Check on Jackson Sakura. Well fought, Eagle. Though I would have preferred if you hadn't taunted that thing. What did you find? Practically nothing. Sakura, there's maybe a day's worth of food here and some rotting medicinal herbs. It was supposed to be more. Enough for... It was never your intention to go home, was it? What do you mean? A blind Tanakh can't fight. And if you can't fight... The Tanakhth will kill Korra from being blind? He'll face a trial against the machine. They say it's more dignified that way. But it's still a death sentence. So you were gonna use the extra supplies to live in the wilds? I thought it would be enough to get us started. Can't they stay in Plainsong? Plainsong has too many mouths to feed. The Korras would never allow it. We should get back. I'll take this young sprout back. Meet us at the cave when you can.
how am I supposed to tell them when I failed? Speak the truth. Plain and simple. Aloy, we were just about to head in. So what will you tell them? That we'll have to make do. Survive in the wilds without the supplies. That will be a hard life. Better than letting Cory be killed if we go back. There must be another way. I don't see one. So, we're all stocked up then? The cache was empty. But we'll be alright without them. I can't let you starve out here. Just leave me. No! Jax, you said Plain Song has too many mouths to feed to take them all in, but what about just. I am not leaving my brother behind! He'll be safe in Plain Song. And the rest of you can head home. It's the only real solution you've got. The Chorus won't like it. But if I vouch for the boy, share my rations with him, I could convince them. I will do so if Cora wishes. No! You're not taking him! Sakura. I think this is the best option. I'm a burden to you out here. This is what I want. Let me go with him. Permission granted. But brother, this is not the end for us. I will visit you in Plainsong. And no Utaru or Tanakh can stop me. They will be foolish to try. I'll stay and help them pack their gear, then take Korra back with me. You've shown strength and wisdom today. Rare combination. You have my thanks and theirs too, I'm sure.